Now in this video, let's talk about uh, path and the point functions. So let's talk about the point functions first and then we'll come to the path functions. Okay. So for that, I've drawn a PV plot for you. So let's have a state one over here. And for state one, we have state variable P1 and the other state variable would be V1. Okay. Now let's change the state and let's have a process. So this is the process, any random one. So you have P2 and V2. So your state changes from 1 to 2 and we have a process 1, 2. All right. Now if you talk about the functions or I would say properties, another word for functions is properties over here. Okay. So if I talk about the property P1 and V1, it depends upon, it particularly depends upon this state that is state 1. So this is a property which is only at this state or at this point. This is a property which is only defined at this particular point. Similarly, P2 is only defined at state 2. V2 is only defined at state 2. Okay, so those properties or those functions whose values depend upon those particular states or those particular points are called point functions or point properties. Okay, and you know to, to define the point functions, so the properties, the system properties whose values depend upon or depend on the end states, the end states or those particular points are called point functions. So if I have to find out the change in the prop, uh, the change in the pressure property, so this is the change in the pressure. So I would represent this as dp and dp would be written as p2 minus p1. Okay. This means the change in the property of pressure is the difference between the pressure at state 2 or point 2 and the pressure at point 1. Okay. So this can be only found out because we have the values of pressures at point 2 and the pressure at point 1. So you have particular values of these properties at these individual points. Okay. So this is dp. Similarly, if you have to find out dv, that's a change in volume. So this will be v2 minus v1 because you can find out that how much is the volume at this particular point that is 2. All right. So this was about point functions and because you are able to find out dp and dv, these are also known as exact differentials. These are also known as exact differentials. Okay. After point functions, now let's take this knowledge to understand the path functions. Okay. Let's talk about path functions. Now, let's take the same process, process 1, 2. Now in going from process, uh, in going from state 1 to state 2, the system would have undergone some energy interaction with the surroundings. Okay. There might be a work interaction, there might be a heat interaction. So let us say that in going from state 1 to state 2, the amount of work produced is W, which is W in going from 1 to 2. Okay. Or I would say the amount of heat interaction in going from 1 to 2 is q12. Okay. Now, work is basically the area below the PV curve. So if I have to find out how much work has been done in going from state 1 to state 2, then I would have to calculate this much area. So this is the area which will tell us the amount of work which is done by this particular system. Okay. Now, this means that the amount of work which is the area will depend upon the path that the system would take to undergo that process. If 
the path would have been different if I take the path, uh, you know, let us say this as the path, this is the path in the black line, then the area would have been different, isn't it? So the amount of work depends upon the kind of path that your system is taking. Okay. So path functions are those properties, path functions are those properties whose values depend upon the path, whose values depend upon the path taken by the system, depend upon the path taken by the system. Okay. Now, there is a very, you can say, important difference between a point function and a path function apart from the basic definition, but of course. Okay. Now, dp is equal to p2 minus p1, that is the final value minus the initial value gives you the change in the value of point function. Okay. But, if I have to find out the net work done in going from point 0.1 to point 0.2 or state 1 to state 2, I would have to write down it as w12. Okay. And w12, if you, if you write down dw, now, dw does not mean w2 minus w1. This is not equal to w2 minus w1 because we are not able to find out the value of w at state 2. We, you cannot find out the work at a particular state. You cannot find out work at state 1. You can only find out work when the system goes from one state to the other state for the entire process. You cannot find out work at a particular point. So that is why dw is not equal to w2 minus w1. Okay. So dw is written as there is a line on d like this. So this is a difference. Okay. This is exact differential. This becomes inexact differential. So this is equal to w in going from 1 to 2. So this is how it is denoted. So this is how you re represent a point function mathematically and this is how you represent a path function mathematically and a path function is an inexact differential it is an inexact differential okay so i hope you understood the concept of a path function and a point function in a nutshell path function depends upon the path that the uh, system undertakes in going through a process and a path function is an inexact differential. For example, work interaction or heat interaction are path functions. If you talk about point functions, point functions are those values which depend upon the end states or those particular states. Okay, and they are called exact differentials. So I hope you understood this video and the concepts uh, which were uh, you know covered in this particular video. Now let's move on to the next video and talk about a very, very important topic, which we call the quasi-static process.